Do you ever have people come up your Trello boards? Yep, I said it, it happens. We've all been there. The beauty of Trello is that everybody can jump in and collaborate and just easily get stuff done, but it can also be a curse because it means they can come into your boards and move stuff around and maybe you don't always want that. So in this video, I wanna show you how to prevent some Trello uh-ohs by taking care of who has access to do what in Trello. Before we do that, I just wanna give a quick thanks to Amazing Fields Power Up for sponsoring this video. We'll talk about them more in a second, but let's dive into how to control who can do what in your boards. Let's go. First of all, we're gonna start by talking about the actual roles inside a board. So when you invite someone to your board, uh, you can put in their name up here, choose somebody from your workspace, whatever you do, you can assign a role to them. And there's two roles that you'll see when you invite someone brand new to a board. They can be a member or an observer. And this is only available as part of the Trello uh, premium plan. So for instance, if you head over to the Trello pricing page, you might see when you go to add somebody that there's a little upgrade button next to the observer. And that's because you need to be part of the premium plan. Uh, that unlocks the ability for you to add people as an observer. I'll explain what that is in a second, but if you go here and you don't see that, then that's why. A member is, going to be able to do just about anything with the content in the board. They will be able to uh, go through, move cards around, edit cards, add text, uh, you know, add list, archive cards, do whatever you want them to do in there. Whereas an observer has a bit more limited role. Um, all they can do is view the content and comment on cards. So this gives them a way to still interact with your boards and share feedback by leaving comments, but not so much access that they can actually move things around and, and change anything up on you. So if that's really important to you, then you may want to consider upgrading Trello, upgrading Trello to uh, premium so that you have access to that. If however, you're like, I don't wanna to upgrade to premium, but I also want people to see my board without being able to mess it up, something you may wanna do is make your board public and then anybody on the internet can see that board, but you don't have to add people to it. So what this means is you can say, hey, I actually you know, want you to be able to view this content, but when people who are not a member of that board go to see it, it's not going to have options for editing or things like that. They will purely be able to just view the content. And if you're worried about other people seeing the content because it's a public link, that's pretty hard to do because you can see it's a very specific URL. Someone's not just going to guess that and these aren't indexed by Google. So if you search live learning demo board, this is not going to come up in Google. That being said, if it's extremely sensitive information, you may want to go with the approach of making it a private board and then adding people as observers, forcing you to then upgrade to this premium plan. One other role you'll see people have on a board is that they can be admins and someone has to already be a member of your board to be able to do this so you can make someone an admin. They're gonna have some more exclusive powers with this board such as being able to archive it, close it, change the workspace and, and do some special things like that. But in most cases, you're gonna want people to be members. So speaking of who can do what and see what inside your boards, I wanna talk about amazing fields real quick because in some cases, you're gonna want people to access all sorts of things in your board, but maybe you still wanna be able to keep some things private or maybe you want people to not be able to change certain fields. Well, when you add the amazing fields power up, you actually can control these custom fields and who can see and edit them. So for instance, if I go over here, I'm going to add amazing fields. When I add a field here, let's say I just have this text field, maybe I wanna say Brittany Notes or something like this, I can specify which roles are able to do what. That's where you can specify these specific roles with Amazing Fields, giving you more control over who can see and edit content inside of your boards. Amazing Fields is going to actually give you custom fields. I, I like to describe them as their what custom fields should be. They are custom custom fields. So you can add fields to your board and style them however you want. So let's say I actually wanted to make this take up multiple lines and maybe I wanted to make it a little bit wider. Maybe I even wanted to add a conditional role that if it's empty, it is one color. And if it is not empty, then it is another color. And you can do whatever you would like with that. You can control where they show up and what that looks like. And uh, if they show up on the front of the card or not, and all of your rules follow. You can even do formulas. So if you wanna like add two fields together and get a value, um, that is super cool. So thank you very much Amazing Fields for sponsoring this video. And now I'll close with one more thought. I want to show you another section on your boards where you can have a little bit more control over who does what in your boards. So if you click these three dots from any board and you go to your board settings, you'll see that there's an additional permissions section and you can specify who's able to comment on a board 
And so maybe you don't want anybody leaving comments on cards. Maybe you actually want people to only be dragging cards around or using a description. You can disable comments so that nobody can add comments um, to that specific board. And you can also get a little bit more specific. For instance, if the board is public, I believe some of those options will turn up a little bit more, like if it is part of the workspace. Then I actually have other options here, so I can even let any Trello user comment on a card. So that can be super handy if you have a public board and you want people to be able to interact with it, but not necessarily be able to move things around. Uh, you can also specify who has the ability to add and remove members. So maybe you only want admins to be able to invite people to your board or maybe you want everybody to be able to. You can set that permission here. And then um, lastly for workspace editing. So you can toggle on or off if any workspace member can edit and join this board. And that's more helpful if it's for instance like a workspace visible board. What that means is you can say someone else from your workspace could discover this board, join it, hop in and, and start interacting with it. Whereas if you have this toggled off, they're going to need to be added to this board. You'll have to add them so that they can actually do things. So uh, it's great to leave this on if it's something you want more people to naturally flow into and you don't have to manually go in and add people. But if you want a little bit of extra security, uh, you can toggle that off. So that is that is it, folks. Now you know uh, exactly how to control this, how to take control of your Trello boards and prevent any Trello uttos. Um, make sure you're using these settings to your full advantage. And thank you so much for watching this. If you found this useful, uh, you know the drill. Give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. And I also would encourage you to check out the links in the description so you can get started with Amazing Fields if you want to give it a try. Um, you can also subscribe to my Trello newsletter where every week I share all sorts of Trello tidbits. And hey, you can even check out my book I wrote all about Trello. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all later.